Come on. And we got him. Woo. Now I've done a little off camera building, but not a lot. Let me explain how simple this actually was to set up and honestly how quick it was to do. So uh, with the use of the wand of symmetry, I was able to basically build one of these, actually not even just one of them. I was really, I really only had to build one eighth of this entire build because of the wand of symmetry placing all of these blocks in. And I've started to sort of work on the concept for what the interior section is going to look like. And these are probably going to be taller than they already are right here, um, where I'm going to be able to have steeps on top. And I did actually find the quadcopter a little useful. All right. So I may be changing my idea about this quadcopter. Um, if you have this going like this, going uh, vertically like this, and you want to place right here, well, then you can just push forward and backwards uh, to go the, uh, the left and right. Uh, so yes, this can strafe if you think about it a little bit differently. And I did use this uh, to help me build these upper sections here, uh, which was kind of nice. So the quadcopter does have some uses, but yes, I did get some building done. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means that there's gonna be still a lot more work ahead of me as far as this building goes, because I, I really wanna detail this. This one's, I want this to be a very detail-oriented build. So there's gonna be a lot of cool little knickknacks all over the place, but that's not gonna to happen today, because today we are gonna go after the Iron Spells Towers. And I've found a couple of them. So hopefully today we can also get some Iron Spells that will potentially help us in our journey even more. Now, before you start pulling your hair out and wondering what all of these materials are that I built this out of, let me go ahead and show you because uh, it, it, it probably would help you guys. Um, and this is cobblestone bricks from Twigs. These are detailed spruce planks. These are from the chipped mod, uh, which I just used the station for. Um, and uh, all of these blocks right here, like all of the chipped blocks, they kind of have a look like this. I, would, I do want to have a room for these eventually. Um, I even use the chipped for the glass that you see all on the walls. This is from the glass blower right here. Um, and yes, everything else, all of the floor material, this was just me using a trowel from Cork uh, and having them in my hotbar. And I placed down a bunch of these random stone types. This also was from the chipped mod. The chipped is uh, basically like the builder's wand <laughs> or basically like the, uh, the chisel mod in this pack. Um, and yes, this is just some regular trap doors and just some spruce. So, I mean, all in all, it's not a whole lot here. Uh, at least not yet. There's going to be a lot more cool things being added. But anyways, let's talk about the Iron Spells mod now that I've uh, basically talked about all of the building stuff. Now, as I work my way over to the Iron Spells tower that we're going to hopefully take over today, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Iron Spells. Now, Iron Spells is it's very interesting it is definitely a wizard based mod you cast spells you have cooldowns you have to worry about your mana all of that stuff matter now at the start it is very slow to sort of get started and it does require a lot of looting a lot of chest drops as crafting for example the ink and stuff like that that we're going to talk about here in a minute it's not something you just obtain or can craft right away um, and it does require a lot of repetitiveness. So you are going to be doing a lot of spell combining first, the initial spell crafting, but then combining the spells to level those spells up. And then you're going to progress and get better and better spell books and also have better armor that are going to essentially help you cast better spells and also regen your mana and all that stuff quicker. So there's a lot to the mod. Um, and there's also a lot of utility to the mod. Uh, for example, there's an elytra spell. There's a spell that will give you basically an elytra. Um, and then there's also spells that let you dash for that elytra. Uh, there's tons of cool things. There's also a lot of weapon spells that can, uh, do AOE damage to mobs and all kinds of stuff. But how do we actually get into that stuff? Well, we first have to find, for example, something like this. This is a tower over here. It is a mage tower, I believe, and we will actually find some of the materials inside of here. And these are also kind of cool because there's hidden things in them. 
Now, I am a little familiar with this. From All About 9, I did play around with iron spells quite a bit. And so in this pack, I should be quite familiar with this. And uh, I do know there is a secret lurking underneath this tower right here. Yes, there is a secret. Also, is that... Yep, that is uh, That is a... Uh, <laughs> what is this? This is the Blue Skies mod. All right, anyways, this is the tower. And it's kind of cool that it's perched right up top here. So let's plop on in and let's take a look inside this place. Now at face value, it doesn't seem like much in here and there's really not much for you to actually worry about, but this map really gives it away. There is something lurking in here. Maybe not up here, but it is something. There is something definitely lurking in here. Um, you know, I might actually take some of the stuff that's in here. There's like amethysts. There's some candles. There's also a bunch of hidden things in here. And we're at cloud height. We're way up here. I need to make sure my respirator is staying good. I do have a couple more just in case. But I definitely recommend like breaking through blocks because you might find things like this. Like, why is there a piston right here? Like, what is that about? Also, this is an inscription table. I think we already have one back at the base, but I'm going to grab this one again just in case. But yes, there's a lot of like interesting things. A lot of amethyst, which I really like. And let's see, what is up here? There's a wall of ice. Okay, oh, and there's blue ice up here. That is that is very nice, actually. Uh, there's a, a barrel right here. Oh, this is the stuff we need. So this right here, this is the inks that we are gonna need quite a bit of. And like I said, it, it can be kind of difficult to obtain some of these things because of this. We got a silver ring, which is plus 25 mana. All of this is actually gonna help us in our journey and we got an ice spell it looks like summon the polar bear <laughs> so uh, honestly I've, I've played around with the summon polar bear the summon polar bear is pretty good i mean it literally does summon a polar bear also um there was a door there i don't know why they have like random doors and stuff also don't be afraid to break things inside of here look at all these bookshelves these books are definitely worth nabbing there we go and let's see is there anything else hidden it's like each floor could potentially have something hidden in here there's some snow for a snowman that'd be kind of nice actually oh i still have my loot from the last time i looted in here yeah for example back down here on that piston like why is there a piston down here there's there's actually a lot of like weirdly hidden things like for example this <laughs> Um, so I, I really hope I don't die down here, but there is a thing. There's a guy down here um, that just casted some ice spells. Um, I'm going to put my sword in and hope I am ready for this. Okay. I don't know where he went unless he teleported out. Could have teleported out of outside. I think these guys can teleport or maybe it went a little bit lower. Okay. Yes, because I'm pretty sure. Yes, there's a trap door over here. This does go a bit lower. I wonder where the guy went. Wait. <laughs> this is the underground dungeon. Is he gonna... He's, he's trying to trick me into staying down here. Ooh, there's a wither skeleton skull. So, I mean, that's nice all in its own right. So, we got ice block scroll, the arrow volley, some diamonds, blaze rods. Okay, the loot... The loot is... I should have looted this a long time ago. There was blaze rods. And I don't know if this goes any further. This looks like just regular cobblestone underneath here. But where did this ice guy go? <laughs> he wasn't he wasn't here. Look, there's even oh my gosh, we wouldn't have had to have gone to the nether. It's all right here. There's an amethyst bud. Okay. So I think we are good as far as this goes. But I've got to find where this guy went. Because he definitely teleported out, I think. Where is he? Well, if the guy's not down here, maybe he's up here? Oh, there he is. Okay. Oh, he summoned a polar bear. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Woo. Okay, where did he go? He teleported again? Is he even further up on the tower? Oh, no. No way. Maybe he went down below. Aha, yes. This guy tried to distract me with the polar bear, but... Killing these guys are what grants you with some nice scrolls 
and also runes. However, ink is the thing that I really want, but still, runes are really nice, and this is how we would actually obtain those. Now, on my way to another one of those camps, this is a massive villager tree right here. Uh, this is the building that I see on the map that I'm like, ah, yes, this is the building. But this right here that we uncovered last episode is quite insane. Okay, I do want to see what's up here. It is a villager area, and I think we have another one of these nearby. I just haven't got the chance to explore it yet. Um, okay, so this is some sort of jungle tree. A couple of beds. Oh, there's a bunch of loot in here. Melon seeds? I mean, I do have melon seeds. And, ah, yes. Of course, there's going to have, like, some nice integrated loot. I'm just wondering, is there any items in here that I maybe don't have already? I'll always take name tags. Like, this is good. This is definitely not in our journey. <laughs> like, none of these items are uh, are going to be needed for what actually we're working on. Oh, Fortune 3! Never mind. Fortune 3 is fantastic. There's also bamboo spikes. Might actually... You know what? I, I can make those. Um, And I'll take the bone. Um, let's see what's upstairs. I'm sure, surely there's, there's more up here, right? Is there any steps that let us go up higher? Ah, there is a rope, like, right in the center. Oh, and there's cake, moss paste. What are these, dirty glass shards? And another cake? You know what, I'll take cakes. I'm fine with that. And there's a bunch of food, okay. I'm just stealing from all of these guys, uh, just ignore me. So this should be like a ladder, right? Ah, yes, the rope is definitely a ladder. And this should take me to even more goodies. A cocoa bean sack, an urn. I don't know if the urn would have anything in it. I would have to break it, right? Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like the urn has anything in it. <laughs> so, but yeah, it just looks like a bunch of just kind of loot that you would expect to see in an area like this. I wonder what all of these other areas are, like have to offer. Ooh, this one has berries. That's kind of nice. I haven't found one of those biomes yet. We got some soap from supplementaries. We're finding all kinds of goodies. Okay. And then these branch off into some really cool looking areas. Oh, there's a little birdie up here. Oh, I love this item right here. The statue can actually hold your items from supplementaries. Very cool. Very cool. Oh, these are trap chests, by the way. They have kind of like this red glow around them. This is a present that has pie in it. Oh, we got a we got a goblet. A lot of supplementary integration into the loot pool, which I I'm not I'm not a not opposed to for sure. Um, we have a cocoa farm already. Yeah, I mean these are it's just a bunch of items that would have been very helpful early game. I just did not get lucky and find this right away, right off the bat. Ooh, now this one's pretty cool looking. Okay, very interesting. It's got spikes. It's all dark. Man, that's where their dark wizard must be located. That guy, I would I would check on that dude. Oh, I see how it is. I leave for just a moment to look here and someone tries to commandeer my aircraft. Uh, excuse me, dude. I need I I've got I've got to have this back. Sorry, man. This is mine. Uh I uh, yeah, I'm going to I'll be on my way. I see. I don't know if I want to stay around these thieves. All right. So, this is where things could get a little challenging. This should be a like kind of like a pillager outpost. But a pillager outpost for, uh, yes. A pillager outpost for the iron spells. Um, and I believe there are spawners in here, and I want to get rid of them as soon as possible, that are, like, definitely downstairs, I think. If I remember correctly, if you just break right on in, you're probably going to find the spawner. And they are definitely nearby. Oh, let's get rid of this guy. Hey, no. Let's see. I'm pretty sure, yes, there is a spawner. Yes, and it does spawn these guys. So thankfully I got that cleared away right as soon as possible. Whoo, because those are gonna really bother me. Yeah, I those will kill you quick. All right, so inside here, there should be some nice loot, hopefully. Uh, but also there is a boss, just like the last one. There's like a little mini boss. And I'm wanting that because that has the potential to grant us with some nice, uh, nice stuff. Ooh, and this is also where we get a bunch more of that ink. Fang Strike. Ooh, I will take that. Let's continue up. And like I said, there's probably little secrets hidden all over the place. Just kind of check behind bookshelves and stuff. Oh, and th this is a little parkour, right? <laughs> nice, so we got some parkour. Well, so we open that up, then we can get up here, right? 
Oh, that is that is challenging. Okay, there we go. And then oh, yep, nope. I have I'm I'm a little lacking on my parkour skills. It's been a while. It's been a while. Let's see candles. There we go. And what do we have in here? Ooh, more ink. I will take that. Blessing of life scroll. And we got looting. This is all kind of nice, actually. <laughs> Some of this loot, like this is stuff we don't have and would take a lot of RNG to, to get elsewhere. All right, let's jump this way. Oh, and this is where the big, this is where the big boy's at. Okay. Yes. I am going to. Oh. Come on. And we got him. Woo. Oh man, that was a that was a close call. That was a close call. All right, but we did end up getting uh, a bunch of loot from that, and we got the firecracker scroll, and we should find more loot hopefully in here. Let's see, there's a goat horn. Ah, there it is. And we got a shield scroll that would be actually pretty useful. Pretty useful. Let's go ahead and see what's in this. More ink, and so these are where we're gonna find a ton of ink. Let's also head back down underground. And let's see if we won't find more ink down there as well. By the way, I noticed there's a book in here that is all jumbled with a lot of the... Isn't this the galactic letters that, that Minecraft uses? Yeah, it's all jumbled up, unfortunately. Really, really difficult for us to be able to determine what that says. Oh, man. All right. I'm working my way down. I noticed right here there is a doorway. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. That takes you down into the underground section, which is very dark, by the way. But this is going to contain more ink, which is exactly what we need. More ink. I'm always down for that. Now, was there more to this? Or is this just... This is just where that spawner was at. The spawner is awful. Definitely worth getting rid of immediately. Now, while we're over here, we might as well try this out. Are we able to take this guy down? Okay. That was pretty quick. Let's uh, maybe land on these leaves. I have no idea what this all is about, but okay, we got a electric novel. Grants the player thunder calling. What does thunder calling do? I'm actually kind of scared that I activated that. I do not want thunder to be rained upon me. That would not be good. Okay, we got some bottles of enchanting. This is from the uh, the the Priliger. Pr pr well, if I can say it right, right? It is from, yeah, the Progliger, <laughs> the Progliger mod. It's really hard for me to say that for some reason. And oh my gosh, they have a jar of dirt. <laughs> they have a literal jar of dirt right here. Oh, that's actually adorable. I love that. Nice, nothing like a jar of dirt. Now with the few things that we need to get started with the Irons mod, we can now hopefully start to build a few things and maybe start using our first couple of spells. Now, the way the progression works with the iron spells is you have a different sort of progression in spell books and um, the rarity is going to be determined by the spell book itself. So you may have like a high level legendary scroll, but you can't use it unless you have a legendary book or a book that supports legendary spells. So with that in mind, I think our best starting book requires us to go a little bit into the nether. Now you can make like rare ones, uh, like the rare ones right here. These also require hog skin, uh, but like the ironbound tome, uh, it's, it will use uncommon spells. You have five slots, but it's pretty cheap to make, but remember it'll only let you use uncommon scrolls. So I think at least trying to go for the epic would be pretty nice. Now, this is just arcane essence, which we have found through looting and also killing a few mobs, a couple of diamonds, and this will give us an eight slotted spell book um, that just needs a regular enchanted book in order to make and uh, some hog skin. So that means we need to go to the nether and potentially farm up some skin. So if I'm going to go back into the nether, I want to make myself an obsidian skull. And I think at this point I should have everything needed in order to do this. So it looks like I'm gonna have to farm a little bit more obsidian, but that's quite easy. We can just wash a few magma blocks and we should have the obsidian needed. And now with some obsidian ingots from Forbidden Arcanus, we should be able to make ourselves an obsidian skull. And just having this in our inventory is going to protect us from fire damage for at least 30 seconds. So it's, it's a really nice thing to have in the nether. We are going to head off into the nether in search for some hoglins to take down. And we should be able to do this from our copter actually. Hopefully this won't take too long. Now wandering into a crimson biome, I think the scariest part of this is just getting hit in the face by the crimson mosquitoes. Oh, I absolutely hate those from Alex's mobs. They're completely disgusting. 
Okay, I think up here, maybe there's a hoglin. I don't see any spawning yet. Uh, maybe because this biome is actually a whistling woods. We've actually got to head all the way over in the map, all the way down here, it seems like, is a crimson forest. Wait, actually, maybe not, because there's a couple of hoglins down here. And just to be on the safe side... Yes. I should be able to take them out from in the air, which does look like it drops quite a bit of goodies. Ooh, and our magnet picked it up. I'm afraid to, like, use my gun through, through this. I don't know how that's actually supposed to work. <laughs> what if I shoot, like, right through my, my aircraft? Okay, I guess that actually does work. I don't know if it's actually going through or not. Okay, I'm gonna have to probably land. And... Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I haven't changed the keybind for swapping. Whew, okay, we ended up getting three of the, the hoglin hide. And I need four, so I still need a couple more. Okay, I just got hit. <laughs> I just got hit with uh, some fire, so it's good to know that my, uh, my little aircraft here is not going to just, like, fall into pieces and drop me on the ground. Whew, after getting hit. I mean, I, I don't know if it's the same with this. Whew. I don't know how I got returned to Cinder on that. But I did. <laughs> Either way, it's good to know that my ship is not going to just drop and drop me into the, the lava. That would not be fun. Oh, man. Just basically a load of anxiety lifted off my shoulders. Okay, I think I have enough. This is awful just being shot by these things. So now that I'm back, let's go ahead and put this together. So we have this fire protection book. That should be more than enough to make this. And now we have ourselves our first actual spell book that is up to epic level. Um, and so how do we actually put spells in here? Well, that's actually where that inscription table comes into play. And this is where you actually insert those scrolls that you may have found within the spells mod. So let's see, we have tons of different spells here and it will tell you the level. For example, this, it does 11 damage. It is a firecracker scroll that we got and it is epic. So we can actually use it. But if we had a legendary one, for example, we wouldn't be able to use it in this, unfortunately. So at this point, there's very few um, legendary uh, spells that we do have access to, like the higher level they go up. Um, I believe, no, actually, no, it, it's not the higher the level. It just depends on what particular spells they are. Um, but we should be able to support Epic, which is there's quite a lot of spells that are already in that range. Uh, now, it does seem like some of them have an innate like quality, for example, Epic and Legendary. And whenever you level it up, for example, level it up to level four, it goes up into the Legendary, which you wouldn't be able to use it unless you had a Legendary book at that point. Speaking of this particular spell, this is kind of cool. This right here is the Angel Wings that I was talking about, and this will give you an electric flight. It does require Epic Ink, Paper, and also a Divine Pearl, which is quite easy to make. And this is done inside of a Scroll Forge. So yes, you can craft very specific scrolls, and there are a lot of cool scrolls in here. So let's go ahead and start applying some of these spells to the book. So all you have to do is basically select a slot and go, you know what, I want the Burning Dash to be in there. And then I'm gonna put it in that slot. Um, for example, I want this one to be here. I can put that in there and so on and so forth, right? And we can start to fill these in just like so. And by the way, if you wanted to remove one, for example, you would just select the one you want to remove and just pull it out. It's it's honestly that simple and very customizable. So now that I have a couple of spells in here, I can take this book out. And by default, this is set to R, but I have mine set to V just to make it simple because R is to reload. And this allows me to pull up a will to select my spells. So for example, this is a 14 damage ice spell. And uh, I don't know where I can use this, but maybe over here. Once I have it selected, I can right click and this will cast and then it will it will do the spell. Um, and it just used a ton of our mana. You can see on our mana bar right there. Um, and then this is the firecracker one. I may not have enough to cast it, but there it is. So yeah, the firecracker will just do a bit of damage to, for example, the mob that we are attacking and so on and so forth. Uh, and then the summon polar bear does exactly what we've seen earlier. It summons a polar bear. The burning dash is kind of cool because this shoots us forward. <laughs> it's, it is literally a nice little dash. Um, now there's a lot of like nice spells and stuff that we can make right now. It's going to take a lot to get those. 
um, as we do have to explore a whole lot more to be able to find more of these structures. But for example, Firebolt is something that's pretty easily done, but to make this forge requires Crying Obsidian, which means we need to find structures that contain the Crying Obsidian in it because Ob Crying Obsidian is not something that is typically made. It has to be located and found. Okay, okay. Now, I, we can actually make a few other things. So these are two of the rings and charms that we can actually craft. A lot of these other ones, we are either going to get them from the Wandering Trader or we're going to have to find them in loot. Um, but we can actually make the Amethyst um, Residence Charm, and this will give us 15% bonus on our mana regeneration. And then we have the actual mana ring. Uh, and then this one is a little bit more expensive because it does cost a bit more of the Arcane Essence. But this one is going to basically double our current mana that we have. Um, now, I do think uh, I already have a ring, I think, from this mod. So let's see, uh, that we did end up finding. I think I either bought it from a, a villager I don't remember, but in the spells, we do have a silver ring, and this is plus 25 max mana, um, along with this is 25, this is 100 max mana, so, I mean, it's almost better to use this, um, and then we can put this in our necklace slot, which I think goes here, so yeah, instead of using this, we're going to use that, and I would rather keep my magnet than have the extra mana, but there we go, now we have 200 instead of 100 to kind of play with. Now, some things to note that are kind of frustrating with this mod. If you get hit while you are mid casting your spell, it will interrupt your spell cast, which is kind of frustrating because if you're being bombarded with a bunch of mods, your mobs, you're not really going to be able to use any of your spells, unfortunately. By the way, I got to show this one because it's, it's honestly pretty cool looking. Yeah, it is, has literally casted a shield and it has a health, <laughs> which could be kind of useful in battle. I will say this would be very useful. Now we might as well actually accept our quest. It looks like we could get some nice stuff. We just got netherite ingots. Okay. Yeah, we have a chance of getting netherite ingots from these. It looks like all kinds of interesting stuff like orbs of temporary flight and things like that too. Um, so I'm definitely going to accept these quests. Even though we get like oak logs. I can't believe we just got a, a thing of netherite. Okay, we got a diamond from that. Yes, I will take that. It's a low chance, but uh, we got two netherite actually and 16 diamonds. Now, some things that can help with cooldown and stuff like that besides uh, some of the charms and necklaces we, we just made, you can actually craft up these uh, pieces of gear. Now, some of the gear can be crafted, some can't. But for example, this requires a lightning rune. Uh, this can be crafted. Some of these runes can be obtained in different manners. But like a full set of this is actually going to help with the overall, uh, like it, it's gonna help with your overall ability to use these spells. Um, as you can see, some things like this, it's like 8% um, evocation spell power and things like that's just gonna do a lot more damage to these mobs. I think one of the easiest sets to get is going to be the Arch Evoker Coats, uh, the whole Arch Evoker set, because you do uh, get the, uh, the uh, evocation runes um, and you can craft them with emeralds. So these are all relatively simple to craft. However, getting the dust, this right here just requires you to take on these mobs, these necromancers and stuff, and potentially find this in loot chests. By the way, now speaking of other quests, I might as well accept these. There's a chance of us getting all kinds of stuff. Like there's a soul steal, fire resistance potions. Like there's a bunch of other stuff in here. An inventory connector. Uh, we got a book here. This is uh, for defeating the bosses here. So there's a chance for us to get all kinds of stuff like Horizon Knight. I think that is uh, that's from Blue Skies. We just got in what? An Ignium ingot? This is like from beating the Nether Cataclysm boss. What? And and we're just given it. Also, take a look at my experience bar. Um, Just by accepting some of these quests, uh, we are just receiving a ton of levels here like a ton of them. Also, uh, we have this down here that gives a compass. Like we have this one, which I never accepted, which gives me an eggplant. I should have probably accepted these a while ago. We get to select this? Of course I'm going to take the Ignium ingot. What? No way this is letting us choose this. Hold on, I don't even want to pick this one yet. We now have two of these. That's all we need in order to make this sword. This does 14 damage and all it takes is one of these to upgrade netherite gear and no, wait, 
<laughs> we get to do this? Okay, I'm, you know what? I might just, I'm just going to take the Igneum ingots because those are some of the most powerful things to just be up and given like that. Now, I think with all of these levels, I'm definitely going to, I think, invest in Strong Fist and max upgrade Strong Fist. And let's see, attack speed will max this out as well. Oh my goodness. This is insane. Um, Obsidian Shield, this will help reduce burning damage. Oh man. Uh, and we can also do soft landing so I don't have to worry about dying from fall damage. That was so many levels it give me. That That's like enough to... Well, this will increase our jump height, I, but I uh, we can't remove it if we put that on. Oh, that would be nice. Maybe just like a couple. Like how much does this actually increase the jump height? I just want just enough to jump over fences. Okay, one more probably. Okay, I don't want to go any higher than that. I just want enough to jump over fences like this. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm like a little giddy now because of all these things we're unlocking. Um, that's maxed out. And then we have PV PvP protection, like damage taken from other players. I don't think that's going to be an issue. There's also the Ender, but we don't have Ender Pearl farm or anything like that yet. We can increase mining. That just seems a little absurd. We can increase our cutting maybe. So at least 15 and fast swimmer to definitely take that up a little bit. Oh my gosh, we're barely using any levels. I mean, might as well. Like, I don't know if this is bad. Can we, we can always downgrade it looks like. Oh, that's good. We can, we can degrade it. Yeah, it gives us back our levels. I didn't even realize it gives me, it gives me back the levels. I think the rest I'm just going to store in here. That's just absurd. So I'm now more and more starting to feel a bit more powerful. We basically no longer take fall damage. I can swim insanely fast now, which is really, really nice. Oh, this is super, super nice. And like I said, the fall damage, basically not even taking any. I have a dash ability, which I absolutely love. We also have several other ones, like for example, heat surge, which it basically sends out this heat surge that will reduce the enemy's uh, armor by 30%. That is quite effective. We can also pretty much insta-swing now. Like, we can just tap this fish, like, very, very quickly over and over again, which is kind of absurd. Um, and we now have a gun. That is a laser gun. Okay. I'm starting to feel a bit more powerful, but I'm sure I'm going to be put in my place when we actually go boss farming. Well, that is, unless we use this Igneum ingot and we actually make this in crazy, this is crazy incinerator sword. Now looking at the quest, it does appear like there are more opportunities to gain more of this Igneum uh, ingot, which uh, is quite insane, honestly. So if we are able to actually craft up this gear, basically going from diamond to netherite very quickly, immediately into this, this would be an insane gear upgrade. Like this gear, is ridiculous. Like with Lava Walker, we have Flame Reflex. Like it, it, the, you can combine it Elytra with the chest piece. And then there's also Lava Vision allowing you to see under lava, basically making you completely fireproof is quite amazing. But with that, we still have way more adventures to go on and I cannot wait to see what this pack holds for the future. And well, guys, with that, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up. Also check out my Discord and potentially my Twitch, all of that linked down in the description below. I do stream three days a week and I would love to hang out with you over there. And with that, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go to GDFGH300. Thank you, by the way, for your amazing support in supporting me over on Discord and becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. I will see you in the next one. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. Bye!